All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the Macmillan A6 and A10 for either hunting or tactical applications. All right, so this is a great opportunity to talk a little bit about what really is one of my favorite, what I would consider long range hunting stocks, and that is the Macmillan A6. Now, the A6 actually came about a couple years ago, really what I would consider an updated Macmillan A5. So I wanna talk about some of the, the stock and the design and some of the, the upgrades that they've made over the years that really just takes the A5 and transports it into a very capable long range rifle. And just go over some of the things that I like about the stock and maybe some of the things that you should be considering when looking at potentially the, the A6 or the A10 and where that would be probably a great uh, alternative choice or those that should look at that one instead of the A6. So the Macmillan A5 has been around a long time. It's traditionally considered a, a sniper stock and I've personally have shot one for several years in varmint hunting and long range shooting. A couple of the things though that, that really dated the A5, not that it's an obsolete stock or anything, it's still a great choice, but a couple of the things that I personally didn't like about it for tactical or sniper type matches was they had a really wide forearm, which was great for stability, but then they were rounded. Same thing with the, the butt stock and how the butt stock itself formed and just everything sort of rounded and, and very, very big, big grip that stuck out really wide right here. And although it was a fantastic shooting stock, it didn't fit a lot of people really well. And in the tactical and sniper type matches that we were shooting, there was a couple of things that I didn't like as far as jamming it into things or against things that didn't give a flat surface. So fast forward now to where we're into the Macmillan A6, and I will tell you, what a home run of a stock. We have built many rifles in the A6 that was either a varmint rig, so a 22 or 26 inch stainless barrel, or a hunting rig, in this case with a carbon fiber. And we shot it at the shooting school here for several years for students to come in and shoot. And it truly is just a great updated A5 that, that has a great place both in the hunting world as well as if you're interested in shooting it in tactical and sniper matches, it certainly can hang in there. A couple of things that I really like about the stock that whether it was an update or an upgrade or whatever the thought process was behind it, but really just fantastic. They, they brought in the size a little bit, even though the form was still nice and wide, they brought them in and they squared them off. I find that to be really important if you plan on shooting any type of tactical matches or if you're shooting off of, out of a blind or a window seal in a hunting cabin or a camp where you're gonna slide the rifle through and then you're gonna jam it up against a nice flat straight edge on this side, allowing it to have a nice you know, two contact point that's, that's a raceway that you can sort of jam the rifle into a little bit, but it's flat, it's not rounded, so it's not gonna roll off and so I really like that for that application. And then also when I shoot a little bit, I'll actually lay my fingers along the side of the stock if I'm shooting off of um, barricades or other things where I'm trying to get more stability, rooftop simulator, which we'll, we'll cover more in later segments in the teaching portions of our online shooting school. But I'll lay my finger along the side of the stock like so, and I've got that nice flat perfectly straight area that I can jam my finger up into, get this one down below, and I've, I've got really nice contact points. So the fact that they, they squared these off is fantastic. I really like that for any type of tactical or sniper type match. It's also nice and smooth. They offer an Arca rail, which I absolutely get. Um, Arca rails are a personal choice. Uh, this customer, this is a, a rifle that's going out to Texas, had opted for an Arca rail, and it's great for shooting off of tripods or other quick detach systems, as well as a bipod. But for me personally, I'm not an Arca rail guy, and the reason being is when I'm not shooting it off of something, uh, there's two things underneath here that sort of bother me just a little bit. Number one is this is a very slippery surface, and so if I have to lay the rifle onto something to shoot off of, Although it is nice and flat, it's also very, very smooth. The other thing that, that I think is just a little bit of a miss with the Arca Rail, especially in these type of stocks, 
is right in here and right in here where Macmillan you know, sort of does its final pin or attachment, there's a little bump that sticks out. I don't like that when I'm sliding a rifle in and out of the battery. It's just a kickoff point or a catch point to catch off of a bag, a window seal, a barricade. So although it's personal choice and there are more people that probably shoot ARCA rails than not, especially with all the new chassis systems out there, but on a McMillan A6, I would probably opt me personally for a nice smooth bottom with a, a small Picatinny rail up front and that way I've got all of this real estate in here to slide the rifle back and forth up into a stop that's into the or M5 type bottom metal that, that's attached here. Again personal preference it's not a knock against it it's not a sales pitch for it this is the pros and cons of how I look at it and things that I like uh, but it's not necessarily what everybody else shoots or really likes. <clears throat> The other thing that I liked a lot about the A6 in general was they they made the grip back through here a little bit smaller than the A5. Now I've got smaller hands, so you know the the big honking A5 grip, which I thought was like trying to hang on to a two x four, just never really gave me really great control because this is the steering wheel for the rifle. You know the grip and then back and through here, we've got to control that. And they made it just a little bit narrower, and then they made it so that I can either, like I traditionally shoot with my thumb up on top, or I can wrap my thumb around, or I can almost do what we consider like a thumb shelf, which is laying my thumb off this side, just right underneath the, the safety. So I really like the grip a lot on the A6 as well. The other part to this, of course, is an adjustable cheek piece, adjustable length of pull, but I really like how they did the the butt hook per se. So I can hold the rifle here and jam it into my shoulder. That's what it's made for. But I can also ride a really nice set of bunny ear bags back here that will actually come up and, and sort of cradle this. And with those smooth sides, they sort of come down at a little bit of an angle rather than just rolling. It gives a nice contact point to pinch, which I really like a lot. And the other part that I thought was fantastic is that rather than just having a rolled over cheek piece, which is traditional on like a McMillan A5 and A3, they squared off these edges a little bit. That does a couple different things. Number one, it allows me to get my face a little bit more into the rifle this way, because I don't have that, that sort of hump sticking out. But it also has a nice smooth area on, on the side of your face to where you get into the gun, you've got this really nice contact point. We'll talk about cheek weld and cheek pressure a lot in the long range shooting school and the online long range shooting school that we're posting up now. It's so important, but just having a really good contact point that you can feel means a lot. And then a lot of people don't know this, but with the Macmillan, you can actually loosen up the two screws inside here, and you can actually shift the, the cheek piece itself back and forth a little bit. So if you've got a little bit more rounder face and you can't get quite behind the gun, you can slide the cheek piece over a little bit to give you more room. And then you can also cant it a little bit. And so I can actually twist the cheek piece, sort of a little bit of an angle back here so I can sort of get my head in there nice and easy and set it up that way. Now there's a pro and con to that. And just to be clear, I normally don't offset my cheek piece because in a lot of the tactical and sniper matches or in hunting situations where we traditionally had to shoot both strong hand and weak hand or strong side and weak side in this case with a rifle. So if I'm going to shoot a right-handed, which I'm a right-handed shooter, if I have to shoot left-handed for whatever reason, the position dictates it or the stage dictates it, all of a sudden I've got not just a cheek piece in the center, but I've got it pushed off to the other side too far. So it's like bringing it too far out, going to make it really uncomfortable. So I like to leave it in a neutral position and learn to work with it, get it adjusted height-wise, but that way it doesn't really interfere with shooting either right-handed or left-handed if, if you have to. The stocks themselves, I actually really like the look of the carbon stocks. However though, I really like the painted stocks a lot better. It, it's a minute point and you know, with McMillan you can really get some really cool molded in colors so they can do that gel coat that's like a molded in color and they can do swirls and they, they're beautiful stocks. And then they did the same thing with the carbon fiber, allowing a little bit of the carbon fiber to sort of stick through and see through. Uh, almost a little bit of a clear that's on the stock itself. Me personally, when I'm selecting a stock like this, I always look at, you know, aesthetics second and functionality first. That's sort of how I approach a stock. And for me, with the molded stocks 
um, that have that gel coat or the carbon fiber that has that really nice clear to it, they are just too slippery. So if I was building a hunting rifle or if I was building a tactical rifle, I would opt for a painted stock. Number one, their turnaround time is a lot faster, which is always nicer. If you scratch it all up or, or really drag it through uh, the gravel like we have done, so I've shot matches where we've had to lay our rifle sideways in gravel and shoot underneath a car or shoot underneath a barricade. And it doesn't take but a couple shots of doing that just to really rip the whole side of your stock up. Now, most of us consider those badges of honor and it's just gonna be part of the game. You're gonna scratch your stuff all up. However, though, for a nominal fee, you can actually send your stock back and McMillan will actually repaint it, which is really nice. Um, but the big thing for me is that that little bit of paint that's on there, and I probably can't hear that in the video, but it's got a little bit of texture to it. And so if my hands are or have been wet all morning and they got that little sort of like clammy um, slipperiness to them and I grab the rifle, the rifle's got a little bit of traction to it. Or if I'm setting off of a slippery surface like this bag gets all wet or a windowsill, it's got something that's got a little bite to it. Same thing back through here and in the grip area. One of the things that I don't like a lot of um, shooting a rifle is if I shoot and the rifle slides through my hands very easily. And so with really wet gloves, with snow, with wet hands and rain all day and your hands are getting all wrinkly, you grab onto a, a very smooth stock that's wet and then all of a sudden you just don't have that, that really minute control of it. When you shoot, the rifle sort of slips between your hands a little bit more. So I prefer, prefer, prefer painted stocks or chassis. They just give that little bit of a grip to it. So a little side trick here, if you want to shoot in wet weather or cool weather and still have really good control over your rifle is to go out and get yourself a set of aviation gloves. So I was in aviation for eight years. I was avionics and um, aircraft uh, pilots, their pilot gloves that they would wear, they're breathable, they're, they've got some warmth to them, but then they have this really nice thin leather surface on the, the palms that have super great grip to them. And so you can you can feel your knobs, you can you can load easy, you can do all these things because remember they have to turn little knobs and make small adjustments while flying the helicopter. So having big bulky gloves on that they can't have that tactile feel to, or they can't hold little knobs and feel the clicks doesn't help them much. And same thing with shooting. So it's always nice. I always look for them all the time if I can buy a pair. Um, I, I, I put them on and I fold the, the tops up to where they're right down about here and they make for great, great shooting gloves. So the McMillan A6, what I think about it, we had it on the school line for our long range shooting school for nearly, I'm going to say, two years. And everybody that shot it just loved it. I mean, we built lots of A6s simply because we had them on the line and people got a chance to shoot them. So I am a huge fan of the A6. They did such a great job. I think it makes a fantastic long range hunting rifle. And so it's got just enough weight to it that, you, that it's a real rifle, but it's not so heavy that if you had to lug it up over the hill or around the mountainside, it's, it's gonna be a deal breaker. I think the, the stability of the stock and just the robustness of it just makes a great hunting stock as well, as long as you don't get too heavy of a barrel, or in this case, we want carbon. Where I would say the A10, so if you notice on our website, we offer the A6 or slash A10 for our long range hunter. The A10 is like a micro version of this, and we'll do a review on it the next time we get one in inventory that we're building for a customer, or if we get one in for stock or showroom. But it's like a smaller version of the A6 is how I like to look at it. The grip is a little bit shorter, bringing the, the trigger closer to your hand. And where I would say the A10 has worked really well for the customers that have built them here is if you absolutely want this style of stock but in a more compact package. Um, but where we find it is like if you're under 5'7", 5'5", if you're a female shooter with smaller hands or smaller statue, Think of it as a scaled down A6, just a shorter grip, smaller grip, a little bit narrower, a little bit shorter uh, for the forearm depth. And really, I think it's just a fantastic version of this rifle for someone who might be under, I would say, five foot six would be the cutoff. Um, five foot nine, I'm five foot nine, and this fits me great. I can shoot the A10 okay. It's not my perfect fit for me. And so I'm thinking if you're over five foot seven, um, you're sort of in that, that gray area where the A10 would probably work great, um, but once you get 5.9 and above, I think the A6 has the upper hand as far as 
and just fitting you the shooter a little bit better, the grip wise, and as well as the trigger being a little bit further away from her hand. So the last thing I want to touch base with here is when you're ordering a custom rifle, we only order these stocks in one way. They're all built the same. We put Weatherby fill underneath the receiver in front, so it makes the action it makes the stock overall a little heavier, um, but it adds a lot of really dense material underneath the receiver. We always order them with aluminum pillars. We always order them with a, a Picatinny rail up front, uh, painted. We always order them with an adjustable length of pull and cheek piece. And so when we when we put our rifles up on our website for sale, I try not to pull anything out that I think you should have and then add that back in later and jack the price back up. You know, we're very honest with our pricing. These rifles are very expensive to make. They're meant to serve you well and be extremely accurate. Um, so there's no sense in going and saying, hey, we're, we can lower our asking price $150 by removing the cheek piece, $150 by removing the adjustable length of pool, only to turn around and recommend that you get it anyway and take it right back and put it back under the price. So when we price out or spec out one of our custom rifles, they include everything on here that's supposed to be on here that should be on here, with the exception of this case, the customer wanted an arc around. So I really like the A6. I think it's a fantastic stock. I think it's a great dual purpose. So if you wanted to make a varmint rig that you could take to a tactical match, or if you really just wanted a tactical rifle that, that you could take out hunting, you know, not traditionally a chassis type stock. So there are some people that do not fall into the chassis category. They just, they think they lose their feel or a little bit of a soul of a rifle. This is more of a traditional style stock. It has that great feel. It has that great look to it. It looks like a rifle and it certainly does not look out of place in a hunting scenario. So I hope you enjoyed the review. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Feel free to comment below on anything that you would like us to cover on the stock. We could always do another review in the future. So if you enjoyed the video, we would like to ask that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. That will allow you to get an update when we release new videos or new content that will be available on YouTube. So we hope you enjoyed the review of the McMillan A6. We really like the stock. It served us well here at the shooting school for many years, and we still build them on today. This one right here is going out to a great customer in Texas, and it's actually built in a 22 Creedmoor. So uh, those that have been following our podcast and YouTube channel and stuff know that I'm a huge fan of the 22 Creed. This one does not disappoint. We actually took the customer. He flew in from Texas. We took him out to the range and fitted and got it all set up to shoot. Um, she's being shipped back to Texas this week, and boy, what a fun rifle to shoot. No recoil, hammers on steel like crazy. It really just an incredible piece of equipment. So thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Again, my name is Jamie Dotson of Wolf Precision. Thanks for joining us.